Hey Spark Particles, it's Justin, and welcome back to the Up and Daniel Effect. So, I'm a big gamer, and I played Dota, League of Legends, Rainbow Six, and recently I've been getting more into Valorant, especially with the character Sova. Gimmick is gathering intel with his and his recon darts and ahead. doing damage with his shock darts and his ultimate Hunter's Fury. Enemy remaining. So why am I talking about Sova? Well, here's why. Scanning ahead. His arrows bounce and fly like a projectile, which is dictated by physics. You see. All these players follow pro player lineups, just like average Jonas's lineups, but don't really know why and how it works. Well, lucky for you, your boy loves physics and the game. My goal is to have you understand the physics of a Sova arrow and guesstimate where your arrow will go with estimated calculations. Alright, let's get to finding out how Sova's arrows work and how we can create our own lineups by using basic physics. So, first off, let's set some parameters. One. We can assume that there is no air resistance in Valorant, as the arrows relatively fly close to the target, and to make the calculations easier. Second is for the experiments for at least this video. We'll leave it to one map for ease of use, and that is Ascent. Third is the arrows. We can also assume that his arrows travel the same way regardless if they are shock darts or recon darts. Alright, so let's get into physics. First things first, how fast does a Sova arrow fly? Well, I did a few experiments to see how fast it goes, 30 experiments to be exact. What I did was as I went to the practice range and pinged a certain right wall that was 20 meters away from where I stood. And what I did was, because I knew that velocity or speed is meters per second, which is meters divided by seconds. So what I did was divided the distance an arrow traveled by how fast area. it got there. What I also did was divide Sova's arrows into three parts, strongest, mid, and weakest Standing pulse strength. Ahead. And I did 10 experiments per pulse strength. So with that done, I have come to the conclusion that the arrow travels at 36 meters per second at full strength, 34 meters per second at mid pulse strength, and 32 at weakest. So then, how do we accurately take the angle at which the, we shoot the arrow? Well, in this case, we don't really need a precise angle. So we can take the approximate angles in relation to the usual reference angles, which is 90, 60, 45, 30, and zero. Here, for example, in this lineup in ascent at the weakest pulse strength, let's tell you what we know about the lineup. Scanning ahead. We know that the intended destination is on the site, at least somewhere approximately on the site. We also know that the angle is 60 or 70 degrees in reference to my character Sova. I got this by creating a reference point at which which one is 90, which is directly above me, and then I guesstimated at which where 60 or 70 degrees was. So, the question is, how far into the site will the arrow go? Let's get to the physics. So, in order to do some calculations, we need to touch up on some groundwork, more specifically trigonometry. We know from trigonometry, in order to find an angle, we can use Sokotoa. Sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. From here, you might be asking, so how are we going to find all of these with the velocity? Well, if you think about it, when you have a projectile flying at a certain angle, it moves in the x-axis horizontally and also in the y-axis vertically. So now that we know about this, we can now apply it to the arrow. We know that the arrow is traveling at a certain speed and at a certain angle. But what we don't know is how it's traveling in the x and in the y. This is where trigonometry comes in. The opposite is equal to the y component the adjacent is equal to the x component, and the hypotenuse is the direction at which the arrow is coming at. So from here, we know that the sine is equal to the y over the direction of the arrow, and the cosine is equal to the x component over the general direction of the arrow, and the tangent will be equal to 
the y over the x. So here we can find that the y component is equal to the general direction of the arrow times the sine of an angle. All right, let's get down to the math. First, let's state what we have. We have the angle, which is at 60 degrees and the initial speed of 32 meters per second. Then we can use one of the given equations. The final x displacement equals the initial x displacement plus the initial velocity at, in the x direction times the change in time. We can then minus both sides by the initial x displacement, thus getting the change in displacement equaling the initial velocity in the x direction times time. Then we can use the other equation, which is the final y velocity is equal to the initial y velocity minus gravity times the change in time. And what we also know is that the final y velocity is zero because when the arrow crashes down, there is no more velocity. Thus, our equation will become zero is equal to the initial y velocity minus gravity times the change in time. Then, in order to get the change in time, we can subtract both sides by the initial y velocity. And then now we get negative initial y velocity is equal to the negative gravity times the change in time. Then we can divide both sides by negative g or negative gravity, thus removing the negative signs and we get the initial y velocity over g is equal to the change in time. From here, we can plug and chug into our equation and then we get the change in displacement, which is denoted by L, is equal to the initial x velocity times the initial y velocity over g. At this point, we can apply what we learned about the trigonometry thing. You know, the sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Well, in this case, we know that the general direction or the hypotenuse is the velocity. So what we can do is for the x initial velocity, we can use the initial general velocity times the cosine of the angle we are shooting at. For the y, we can do the general velocity times the sine of the angle which we are shooting at. And the final answer we get is L, or the change in displacement, is equal to 45.24 meters. Simple enough, right? All right, let's do something a bit more complicated, like this line up here. Reloading. Blinding! Scanning ahead. Smokes down. Flash out! Caution here. Cutting their vision. Concussing! Revealing area. Right here. All right. So our goal is to land it on site right again, here. which is about 42 meters. And as you saw from the lineup, it hit a one, two, three kind of bounce thing, you know, hit the wall Revealing. on top of the building and then right went down here. site. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to divide this problem into three steps. So step one. All right. So let's state what we know. We know that the distance from me to the wall is about 14 to 13 meters. The arrow is traveling at 34 meters per second because it was pulled at mid strength and it's approximately at 60 degrees from the wall. So we can use the equations we had earlier, which is xf is equal to xi plus vxi times change in time. We can then minus both sides by xi or the initial displacement. We then get xf minus xi is equal to vxi times the change in time. We can Denote this xf minus xi as the change in displacement. Now, in order to get change in time or delta t, we can divide both sides by vxi, thus getting L over vxi is equal to delta t or the change in time. Then we can use the other equation, vyf is equal to vii minus gravity times delta t. We can change delta t with what we got earlier, which is vyf is equal to vyi minus g times L, the change in displacement, over VXI. You remember that trigonometry thing a while ago? We're going to be using it again. So remember that sine is equal to the opposite of the hypotenuse. In this case, the hypotenuse would be the velocity in the general direction. And the opposite would be the y component of the velocity. So 
in order to get the y component of the velocity, we get the general velocity times sine theta or sine of the angle. From there, we can calculate the final y velocity, which is 21.95 meters per second. But Justin, why the final y velocity? Well, in my case, it was easier. And for the rest of the equation, it will be easier for me. But you can try finding the x final velocity or the final velocity on your own. Put down in the comments below what you got. Maybe we can find something cool. All right, on to step two. So from here, it's from the wall to the building. We know that the length it traveled is about 24 meters, judging by this thing right here. Right here. What we also know is that our final y velocity becomes our initial velocity here. So what's the angle at which the arrow is going to be flying at? Let's try and find out. But in order to find that out, we need to set another parameter, at least just for this section right here. Our parameter is that the arrow will end here. Thus, the arrow will stop on top of the building, just to make things easier and to make sure that the angle is precise. So from here on out, we can use the same equations that we had a while ago. Vyf is equal to Vyi minus gravity times delta t or the change in time. Vyf becomes zero because it's stopping on top of the building. Thus, it becomes zero is equal to Vyi minus g times delta t. Then, we can minus both sides by Vyi, thus getting negative Vyi is equal to negative g times delta t. Divide both sides by the negative sign, and we get Vyi is equal to g times delta t. In order to get time, we get Vyi is over g. Then, we can use the other equation again, which is xf is equal to xi plus vxi times the delta t or the change in time xf minus xi becomes l and we get l is equal to vxi times delta t then we can change vxi to the general velocity times cosine theta and delta t becomes vyi over g but how do we solve for this we don't have the general velocity well here's how we do it we know that vyi is equal to the general velocity times sine theta we divide both sides by sine theta and we get vyi over sine theta is equal to the general velocity. So then we can replace general velocity in the earlier equation to this. And we get L is equal to vyi over sine theta times cosine theta times vyi over g. And to make this whole mess of an equation much easier to look at, we change it to L is equal to vyi squared times cosine theta over g times sine theta. And because of trigonometric identities, we know that y over x is tangent and x over y would be cotangent. Thus, we get L is equal to Vyi squared over g times cotangent theta. Then we can get the arc cotangent in order to get the theta. So then we get the arc cotangent of the displacement times gravity over Vyi squared. And we get theta is equal to 54.7 degrees, which is very close to 60. From here, we can make the assumption that when you shoot something at a wall and it bounces, the angle at which it bounces is somewhat the same of what you shoot it at. This will come in handy later on. But then step three, from the building onto the ground, which is the site. What's the angle it's going to be shooting at? Well, we know that from the building onto the site, it's 22 meters. This 22 meters is diagonal distance, judging from this ping that we did right here. With that, right we can here. find the angle by using the arc tangent of 22 meters, thus getting an angle of 87 degrees. So the point of all of this was to have you understand the logic and the mechanics of a solva arrow using real world physics. In a fight, you probably won't remember all these pro lineups that you find, but what you can do is guesstimate new lineups just for the nick of time and maybe you know find really cool lineups that you could show to your friends so this is how i do it so first rule know what angle creates the most distance so from experience and calculating numerous things i know that 45 degrees creates the most distance you can try it out on your own calculate 45 degrees using random variables which you can create on your own and you'll find that 45 degrees creates the most distance compared to 90, 60, and 30, or 0, obviously. So, from there, 45 degrees creates the most distance. That goes really, really far, just like this.
Scanning ahead. Now, when trying to bounce something, we know from our calculations earlier that when you bounce something, it creates the same angle that you had a while ago. So from there, when you try to bounce something like this, revealing area, we know that because our estimated angle would be 30, then the angle it would bounce from is also 30. It's just a rough estimation. So with that in mind, here's a scenario in a different map where I used my physics in order to create a quick lineup in order to help my team. Here's a scenario. I'm in hookah and I don't know whether the, the enemy team will be pushing. So in order to prevent that, I need to create an arrow that will see where they are in relative to the hookah. Because I don't want to show my position by walking around. Because if I walk around, I create noise. So in order to do that, I know that there's an opening right above me in hookah. I know that directly above me would be 90 and directly across me would be zero. From here, I can guesstimate that in order to create a lineup arrow that would hit about a few meters away from me. In order to do that, I need to make the arrow close to 90, but not really revealing it. So maybe like 80, 70 degrees. From here, revealing I shoot the arrow and it lands where I want it to be. And there you have it. That's how I make my own lineups on the nick of time with the real world physics. Memorizing all these pro lineup plays is pretty cool. You know, getting all these cool shots just like this by average Jonas. Last player standing. Shot dart. The piece of bro. Shot dart. Attack. Would be really amazing in certain scenarios. But not all the time will you be able to use these. And sometimes you might have a mental block. So having the understanding of how projectiles work and applying it to Valorant would really help you understand and create your own lineups in these certain mind block moments. I know I keep mentioning Average Jonas, but there are other players out there who are very good Sofa players. Link down in the comment below who you think is a pretty cool Sofa player. I know I'm not the best Sofa player, but I find Sofa fun and creating new lineups helps me understand physics more by applying all these projectile motion stuff into a game that I find really fun. I may not be the best, but I still have fun. And that's what's most important in these kinds of games. Comment down below what you want to see next. Maybe more video game physics or maybe just plain old good old physics. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notif. Alright, see you in the next video, Smart Particles. Catch you next time. Peace.